guys, welcome to Random Riley. Today we're going to be talking about audiobooks. I am an avid listener to audiobooks. I love audiobooks because sometimes you don't want to just, you don't want to have to like take the time and the brain energy to like look at words and transfer them into images in your brain and you just want to listen. It is different though than reading. It's not the same thing, but I still found the torque like Goodreads Gold because why not? Recently I've been listening to a lot more audiobooks. I have a class this year where we don't talk and we're allowed to just listen to whatever we want and it's not a really thought-consuming class so I just listen to audiobooks the entire time. So because I've been listening to a lot more, I've definitely detected a difference between a good audiobook and a bad audiobook. The narrator in an audiobook can make or break a book. If you have a terrible narrator but a great book, that book will be ruined for you forever. So you have to be like very careful about which audiobooks you pick and choose. I very rarely listen to an audiobook of a super hyped book that I think I'm gonna like unless another booktuber I know who also listens to audiobooks said that they like the audiobook. These are just some of my favorite audiobooks that like if you're trying to start listening, if you want to start listening to audiobooks, these are some great ones to start out with. So we're gonna start with number nine and number nine is The Cellar. I, I listened to this book with my mom. For those of you who have read The Cellar, think about that awkwardness for a second. The Cellar is about this girl who was kidnapped by this guy and it's a murder mystery serial killer thriller book and it's actually pretty good. I usually hate thrillers and mysteries but I do enjoy them more when they're audiobooks. The narrator for it had the perfect voice. She was, she sounded like a person who you would completely consider as an innocent frightening child but there were times that she could like drop her voice and she was terrifying. The way that she narrated the serial killer in this was, I am freaked out is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Now I can tell you that I actually like the audiobook better for Shadow and Bone. I have both read the physical book and listened to the audiobook. So Shadow and Bone is a book set in the Grishik trilogy where this girl has this special power. She's the only one who in all of history has ever had this power. And the narrator for this one, she's not, okay, she's not the best voice for this girl because her voice is kind of gravelly. You know, the main character in this book is more of kind of girlier, but she has a fantastic vocal range and she could imitate like other voices like the Darkling. This may be the reason that I never shipped her with the Darkling, is, but the Darkling's voice is so terrifying and like intense compared to the rest of the voices and I love it so much. I know a lot of other people have also loved this audiobook, so definitely check it out if you want to get into the Grushing universe. Vengeance Road. I love this narrator. She is so great. Vengeance Road is a book that's set in the Wild West at some point in time, and so obviously they have very heavy southern accents. And whenever I tend to read books that do ha where the characters like have southern accents, I only give them southern accents unless they say y'all a lot. This narrator did such a great southern accent, and... <laughs> It was so intense and thick that you kind of got mesmerized halfway through by the accent and you're like, oh no, wait, you have to pay attention to what she's actually saying or you're going to get lost. But she's not as good as some of the um, narrators as for like male voices, but she was still very good with the accents, which is always really interesting. An Ember in the Ashes. This one has two narrators because the book is in dual point of view and I absolutely love the male narrator for this one. He is so great, which, okay, dual point of view is kind of, because you have the one narrator's imitation of the other narrator's voice and it can be like really disorienting sometimes, but they did it really well in this one and I really appreciated that. The guy narrator in this one, he's one of my favorites because he, whenever the main, Elias, the main character, was like super annoyed with life, you could hear it in the narrator's voice and I love it when they do that and it was so great, is The Help. This is another multiple narrator one. Octavia Spencer, who is actually the actress in The Help, she narrates the book and I don't know about the other narrators, but I know that she definitely does. Again, the full cast is so great and they Again, they use the narr these narrators have such great emotions and annoyances all the time and I love it and again since the help is like kind of more southern they have accents and they're good accents and you can still understand what they're saying and they're not like so thick that you're like I have no clue what you are talking about. Next up at number five is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Now I love I love the Cinder audiobook so much. Eventually the POV is split in Cinder series, but it's still the same narrator the whole time. And I'm okay with that because I freaking love this narrator. She's so great for Cinder. She will always be the voice of Cinder in my brain. I don't even know why this audiobook is so good. It might just partly because the book is so good, 
but I love this audiobook. I've listened to this audiobook maybe five, six times. I love it that much. Number four is Murder on the Orient Express, another mystery. The only mysteries I can actually stand, I swear, are from audiobooks. Again, it's only one narrator, but I have to constantly check to just to make sure that it's one narrator because the voices are so distinct. These characters on this train come from everywhere, like Mulan and America and England and France, and it's insane, and he does each of their voices so differently and so distinctively, and I love it. And there's this one character, I don't remember his name, but his imitation of his voice sounds exactly like Alan Rickman's voice in Harry Potter series for Snape. I cannot listen to those parts without laughing. I listen to all of my audiobooks at at least 0.25 speed, and I had to slow that one down to like 0.75 because I could not stop laughing. Uh, number three is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Contemporary books for audio is, they're very difficult to get right. I have listened to a ton of contemporary audiobooks and most of them completely ruin the book or they're okay. Contemporaries are a fee for me at most times, but an audiobook, if done incorrectly for a contemporary, can seriously just kill a book. But Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda is actually really great. The actor is obviously like 30-something, 27, but, but he sounds just like an annoyed teenager all the time, and I love it so much. And I know I'm never gonna be able to reread Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda because I'm definitely gonna buy it without imagining that narrator as the voice, and I live for it. I love it so much. Number two is Six of Crows. The main, like the most talked about audiobooks on booktube is Six of Crows and Illuminate. I have not listened to the Illuminate audiobook, but Six of Crows audiobook is a full cast, and it each of their voices are so great. I love the guy who does Kaz, he like mesmerizes me, and I also love the guy who does Matthias because he just, his accent, I never gave Matias an accent, but like the accent that he has in the book is so great. And the good thing about listening to like high fantasy books is that you, they're like, the terminology and the names are so weird, you don't always know how to pronounce them, but with audiobooks you always do and it's pretty great. I love all of those narrators, they're so great. And the first one currently on my list, you guys won't be able to guess this because it's not Ashfall. Ha! mess with you. There's only an audiobook for the first one. It's not that great. So number one is My Lady Jane and oh my god I love this audiobook so much. My Lady Jane is kind of a retelling of The Princess Bride. Well that's what it was set out to be and it just like went way off the tracks and the lady that does the audiobook for this is my favorite person I swear. She's this old British woman. She may not really be old but she sounds old and she sounds so annoyed with everything and that's exactly how I feel that Jane is constantly and I love it so much. Again, I listen to my audiobooks at like at least 1.25 speed and I listen to My Lady Jane at 1.5 speed and because this British woman already, she's a faster narrator than most people so she's speaking really quickly and she sounds really mad and annoyed at everybody and she's really loud and I love it so much. Guy voices are great and it's like most of the characters again have different accents and she does them so well and I love it so much. It's Praise her, she's great, I love it. Yeah, if you guys want to listen to some audiobooks, those are some ones that I would definitely suggest. I'm probably going to be adding more to this list, so if you guys want me to make a part two, just let me know. That is it for today, guys. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more like it. All of my social media stuff is in the description, and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!